from all your moonshine if you want to hear about the kind of booze that they serve around here. Welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Yep, as always, you know it. We are happy to be here. We're glad you're here with us. Now, this is a channel that tries to unlock all the mysteries and tell you all of the inside information that we possibly can. So please bear with us and keep commenting. That is wonderful. Subscribe, share us with your friends, like the video. Boom. I've got that out of the way. All right, the channel's doing really great, and I owe you a great debt of gratitude. So thank you to everybody. Today's video is on a couple of little tips that I wanted to share with you the, that I've had experience with lately. Now, you'll notice, first of all, that I've got a lot going on here, all right? I got, matter of fact, I got a bunch of stuff going on, but I had to take a break uh, and share this because I'm at that point. Um, I'm working on a tilt hydrometer that talks through the, your iPhone um, or Android. Uh, it, it's not my idea. It's one I got from someone else, so I'll make sure I give them the credit because it's a wonderful product. Uh, we're going to build one of those. Uh, the next thing is, is we've got some cutting and some aging and some finishing to do. Uh, but before we get to that, I wanted to share something with you about fermentation. And yes, I've got my 8-gallon mini brew uh, fermenter, which I love. Those things are awesome. I think Jeremy's working on some adaptations to this uh, to make this just a little bit better. And oh, by the way, Jeremy, I think I'm going to get another one. <laughs> I, um, that's how much I like that. I've got two buckets here. And I've been using these buckets for years. Uh, again, if you use a bucket, wash it out. Use your hand, warm soapy water, rinse it, and then spray it with star sand. It, it'll never go bad on you. You know, you'll, you'll open the bucket, it'll be like a brand new bucket. You know, it doesn't have that odor that you tend to find that leaches into your, just clean it out. And oh, by the way, that star sand, another good use for it, is in the shower. You know how sometimes, you know, you get mildew that grow around the bottom of your shower curtain? or around the glass door or wherever it is. You're on your way out of the shower, just spray it a little bit and just walk away. It'll never grow. You'll never have that odor. Um, it's that good. Okay, oh, I'm in Texas. And we all know that in Texas, the weather can be extremely unpredictable. Um, normally it's warm, uh, but here lately, for the past couple of months, it'll get down to, ooh, ooh, a bitter, a bitter 50 degrees. Um, and we freeze to death when that happens. Uh, but in the daytime, it'll warm up to somewhere around 80. Um, so, you know, we got that big swing. And what does that temperature swing, what effect does that have on your yeast? Yeah, uh, it really has a dramatic effect on your yeast because if your yeast get too cold, what do they do? They go dormant. They'll stop producing. Or the, you'll, they'll go so slow, you'll wonder if it's even working. Uh, you warm it back up, and then they start going nuts again. Uh, you get it too hot, they go really nuts. Um, now, at, of course, that brings up the point, um, if you walk into a room that you've got a fermenter setting in, and you smell it, and you're like, ooh, that's rotten eggs, or that smell like two asses. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're probably fermenting at a temperature that's a bit high, all right? Uh, the higher the temperature, the more off odors you're going to get. What happens is, is your yeast start to stress. Uh, they start to definitely compete. I mean, they are really robust and they're going at it, but they stress out and they'll start to produce some off odors. Now, some people describe that as a real thick sulfur odor. Uh, others say it's like rotten eggs. Um, I call it two asses because it's pretty bad. You should be able to walk into a room where your fermenter is setting and either have a pleasant aroma of either a bakery, depends, you know, on what you've got your constituents are inside your fermenter or no odor at all. Um, so th that's kind of what you're looking for. That's your goal. Um, and if, but if you walk into the room and you, and you can smell it and it, it's pungent, well, then you need to drop your temperature just a little bit. Okay? All right. So here's what my challenge is. It is really maintaining the temperature at, in my fermenters uh, for an extended period of time, 7 to 10 days, which is the average for fermentation. We'll get to that. Huh. I went out and bought a couple of, uh, this is a while back, bought a couple of uh, aqua submersible aquarium pumps. Now, these things work extremely well. I got a new one today because I wanted to add it to another bucket. But I wanted to show you this. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to show you this because this is so, this made such a dramatic impact, and it does in a lot of areas around the U.S. and around the world when it comes to maintaining temperatures. Because temperature, of course, during, uh, during distillation, 
is critical, but it's equally as critical during fermentation, okay? That's one of those things that you can control. So the first thing I do is, uh, let me cut this wire off. Uh, don't fret, I know, I, I just cut the power cable off of the heater itself. Now this is an aquarium heater, and I'll show you why I cut that off in a minute. Um, what I love about, what I will really like about this thing, and it just it happens to be this particular model. This is the 100 watt model, uh, and it's designed for either 10, up anywhere between 10 and 30 gallons. Uh, they have a 50 watt model, but when I was there, they didn't have any 50 watts. So I've got the 150 watt, and I'll use the 100 watt. I'm not going to use its full capability. But you'll notice it's got this knob on the top, and you see that red bar that moves up and down? This thing is good. It will maintain the temperature in your fermenter anywhere between 68 and 93 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 20 to 34, probably 35 degrees centigrade. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is set this at my optimal temperature because I have found that the optimal temperature for fermentation, especially for distillers active dry yeast, daddy, uh, is right around 78-ish, okay? Around 78 degrees or so is where you have your most robust fermentation, uh, but at the same time, you're not putting off all those off odors. So I'm going to set that, and you say I just did. I just set that. Is, look, there you go. See my red line? I set that about 78 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which actually equates to, what's that, 26 point, I don't know, probably 26 point, whatever, but it's somewhere close to 26 degrees Celsius. Uh, let me set this aside. Um... All right, we already realized that we've got a wire on there, so that wire's got to come go out of that bucket somehow. Um, and you've got to find a way to do that and seal it at the same time. Now, what's amazing is, and you may be familiar with these, these are those, there you go, you know those plugs, those, those electrical connector plugs that plug in and screw tight um, and then come off? Uh, they're, they're excellent. I got a bunch of these laying around, so I figured I'd use one. It really comes in handy. Now, this one has a base. You see there? It has a base just like it uh, you, for mini brew. When we got those uh, bulkheads you know, for our element, you know how it, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey went through all of that and it, it kind of screwed onto itself and, and sealed? Well, these do the same thing so that you've got an electrical connection from the outside to the inside, but you don't have any leakage. Hmm, interesting. You don't have so you don't have any leakage. So what that means is that if you're done using the heater, you can just disconnect the heater, put the cap on it, and use your bucket in or your fermenter, whatever you're using in the summertime, and you don't have to worry about it, and it's ready for you to use again oh, next year. Huh? When the weather gets cold. Okay. So now we've got a way to have our bucket lid seal and place our airlock so that our CO2 can escape. Uh, and remember, we've got to have that seal because what happens if we don't? Well, then, of course, you won't have any bubbles in your airlock, which seems to be a challenge anyway because I always get those calls, George, my bubbler's not bubbling. I'm like, okay, use your hydrometer. Drop it in there. Find out if it's changed. Look, if your gravity changes and starts to drop, you're fermenting. Yeah, but I don't see any bubbles. Well, you, but you're fermenting. That means you've got a leak around the lid. But, George, but it's a brand-new bucket. I don't care. Um, it's obvious that CO2's got to go somewhere. It's not going to just disappear on its own, so it's leaking out of your bucket lid. Oh, it can't be because it's a brand new. I just bought that bucket. Okay, you just bought the bucket. Guess what? That bucket lid's leaking, <coughs> or it's leaking around your airlock. Uh, but you got to leak somewhere. So work with me. Just use your hydrometer, and, and just because you don't see bubbles doesn't mean it's not fermenting. CO2 will take the path of least resistance, just like electricity. It'll come out the side of your lid. You'll never know it, but you'll swear by God it's not, it's not fermenting. Okay, that's enough about that, but that's what we do. Now, here's what I've got. Uh, of course, here's the cable. You see, and all I do is just attach the cable to the plug, and this is one of those that's already attached. You see, I've got that length. That's why I cut that one. So I got that length and I just attach it to these screws. Now, these come in two different ways, all right? You can get these with small screws on the bottom, and that's the ones I prefer because I can push the wire in there and screw it down. That way, when I want to take this off to clean it, 
just unscrew the screws, pop the wires out, and I, you know. Otherwise, you have to solder them in there, and that means every time you want to take it apart, you gotta, you gotta cut the, you know. But yeah, and I hang it just far enough so that it's above the sediment and it's well below the top of the lid. And why is that? Because this heat that starts to radiate out, I want it to rise. I want it to make the whole thing warm. Now, this plug is marked one, two, three. The pins are marked one, two, three. Pick two of them. Doesn't matter which two you pick, okay? Pick, uh, 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 pick two of the three pins. One of them you're just gonna leave alone. Put one wire on one pin and one on the other pin. If you open this up and unscrew it, I got one right here. And you unscrew it, there you'll see there's three more connectors and guess what? One, two, three, same numbers. The same numbers you used on the plug, you need to use on, or on the receptacle, you need to use on the plug or it ain't gonna work. And so if you pick one and two, just put one wire on one and one wire on two, and it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't care. It's not polarity specific. Uh, all it takes is a hot and, a, and a, a neutral. All right? And then you just put that puppy back together, and then when it's time to use it, you plug it in, and you plug it in, and you let it go. Okay? It's already preset. That is probably one of the best tips I've offered in a, quite a while because it works extremely well. Now, again, what I have on my eight-gallon fermenter here, the one I got from Mini Brew, uh, this thing is five-sixteenths of an inch thick. Uh, it really has some great thermal properties. But um, I'm just, I put the band at the very bottom, and again, that way I can maintain the heat, and the heat will rise. And I've got a thermal well on the side. Uh, it, it comes with the bulkhead. I just had to add the thermal well to it. And I've got this thermometer that just sticks in there. Uh, and this one's uh, calibrated in centigrade, so I'll keep that around, what, 26, 28? Yeah, about 26 fair, uh, centigrade. So I'll be tracking it through that. And if it gets too hot, I'll just unplug it. Boom! There you go. Now, you know you've seen all of this sitting back here. Um, I haven't even gotten back to that part again yet because it's kind of the way I work out here. I'll start one project, and then I'll get a little bit of overload and I'll get sidetracked and I'll just leave everything alone and then I'll move to the next project and I'll get that done and that kind of gives me that breather you know that chance to kind of decompress uh, do something I really enjoy doing like run the still or make some more mash uh, you know something like that and then I'll go back to it hot and heavy so um, when we come back on the next video uh, we're gonna cover cutting aging oh my goodness finishing um, and maybe a few other things that I think you'll find very, very interesting. Until next time, happy distilling.